another GCSE Economics video with me, Mr Goff, for MrGoff.com. Today's video will focus on unemployment. In economics, employment is defined as the use of labour to produce goods and services. Unemployment refers to more than simply just someone who doesn't have a job. In economics, we refer to unemployment as being when someone is both willing and able to work at the current wage rates but is still unable to find a job. There are different methods that can be used to measure unemployment. The two main methods used to measure unemployment in the UK are the claimant count and labour force surveys. The claimant count measures the number of people receiving unemployment benefits from the government. The orange line here shows an alternative claimant count which is available since 2012. This shows that the methodology used to make the claimant count can make a big difference in the reported number of unemployed. A labour force survey involves contacting a variety of households and asking whether there's anyone there that is both willing and able to work but unable to get a job. This is generally higher because there will be people that are out of work looking for work that are not entitled to claim benefits. Labour force surveys are generally carried out using standard international methodologies. This makes them a useful measure of unemployment to compare unemployment between two different countries. The level of unemployment is the total number of people in a country that are unemployed. The rate of unemployment is the percentage of the labour force that is currently unemployed. We can calculate the rate of unemployment using the formula number of unemployed over the total size of the workforce times 100. So a country with an unemployment level of 1 million workers and a workforce size of 50 million workers would have an unemployment rate of 2%. Meanwhile, a country with the same unemployment level of 1 million workers, but this time with a workforce size of just 10 million workers, would have an unemployment rate of 10%. As you can see from this example, the unemployment rate is a much more effective measure of unemployment in a country than the level of unemployment. One of the other points in the specification is that you have to be able to analyse historic unemployment levels. Here you can see the UK unemployment rate between 1997 and 2022. When you are analysing the effects of historic unemployment, you will want to discuss the fact that when unemployment rates are rising, it indicates a slowing economy. When they stay high for a long period of time, such as you can see here between about 2010 and 2014, it may suggest that the country is going through a recession. On the other hand, when unemployment levels are falling, it suggests a growing economy. If they remain very low for a long period of time, that might suggest a country going through a boom period. That brings us to the end of this video introducing unemployment. Join me again next time when I'll be going through the different types of unemployment. Try the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise economics, and until next time, it's bye for now.